There's a special bond between player and coach and it's as tight with Jack, who lived the whole journey with him, as with anyone. I wanted to create an environment where the players would walk in with a smile and regardless of outcome would walk out with one. Um, and I hope I've achieved that and, and some of it was through, you know, the ability for, for me to, to, you know, make my energy, you know, and the players to feed off that and some of it was from my bad jokes. Speaking to some of the players and, you know, Dustin suggested I go to Ibiza and, <laughs> and, and Bakes suggested I go to Lake Grace. So it's somewhere in between where I'll find myself. One last story probably before I go is I, I rang the great Jack Rewalt and um, <laughs> I sort of said, oh, mate, you're available to catch up. And of course, Jack made it all about him. <laughs> he thought I was going to talk, sort of, but I said, no, mate, this isn't about you for once in your life sort of thing. So uh, he'll be deeply embarrassed about that, but it just sums up Jack, to be fair. <laughs> guilty or not guilty, Jack Rewalt, welcome. Hello, boys. How are we? Good, good. Uh, well... Yeah, I've been thrown under the bus there. <laughs> One last time he's, he's thrown me under. Um, getting to the end of your career, boys, and, and obviously um, I've had a couple... I've had one rough game on the weekend and I'm getting a bit older and I get a text from him. He goes, hey, mate, are you free to catch up today? Ooh. And I've just gone, mm. oh, no. <laughs> I'm getting wound up here. I'm getting wound up. And then I said, oh, I had something on I, I, which I couldn't get out. I said... I can't, but are you free to chat on the phone now? And he called me and um, I sort of, I said to him, I'm just sort of, maybe I was sort of half expecting this text a little bit. And then he goes, it's not about you, mate. It's about me. And I was like, oh. And then he said what he said. I was like, oh, no. So, um, yeah, obviously a, a, a big day at, at, at Tigerland today. Um, it's been a big 48 hours. It's been an emotional 48 hours for a lot of people, players, staff, um, certainly fans as well uh, on, on social media and... I mean, this, this man has changed the lives of not only the people inside of the, the club, but changed the lives of the Richmond faithful that have been starved for Premiership success for, for 37 years. What did he say to you and how did you react? Um, I was, he just said pretty much what, what he'd said today, um, that he, he'd sort of come to, to the end of his journey at Richmond. Um, I've, I've cooked sausages a thousand times. I can't find the the one thousandth and one time to to, to cook them. Um, and that he he felt this group was still in a uh, a really good position, but just needed a new voice, and that voice wasn't his. Can you take us inside the before the press conference? Who in the Grand Richmond room, staff and not all staff, but senior staff and and the players? I've been told there was a there was a few tears in that room. It was quite an emotional. Speech. Can you take us into that room, please? Uh, yeah. Well, it's 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 it was it's very emotional um, because there's the, there's an element. Well, there's more than an element. There's a, a, that sadness of of the person that has um, been tasked with the job of inspiring you, leading you, um, driving you, and succeeding to the ultimate success, mm. and 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 guiding you through that is not going to be at that football club when we walk in the door tomorrow and start to prepare for, for this weekend's game. There is, that, there's, there's a, probably a, a pit in your stomach where you're sort of like, oh, that, that journey and that era is over, um, which, is, which is really sad. There's only two players at the football club that have played for Richmond and, and have been coached by another coach other than Damien. That's myself and Trent. Um, everyone else has spent their whole journey under him as a father figure, which, which most senior co men coaches take, take on. Because you go and pluck kids from all over Australia, from different backgrounds, and they sort of yearn to attach themselves to the, to the senior coach, the, the person that provides them with their opportunity um, to achieve their goals, whether that's getting one game, getting 100 games, or, or winning a premiership, which we've been lucky to do, that there is always an, an element of sadness with that. Can I just draw your attention to this? So I'm not sure whether you've seen this. Josh K popped this up late in the day. You and Damien Hardwick are second all-time in the combination of games between player and coach behind only Gordon Coventry and Jock McHale, which belongs to a totally different era and in front of Bill Hutchison and Dick Reynolds. So your link is historically significant, it's the 289 coach, games. Yeah, it's... Um, I mean, it, it, it's a bond and a relationship which I don't think you can... You can't make up in, in a short period of time. I mean, there's been so many um, ebbs and flows in, in, in mine and Dimmer's relationship. You think back to 
uh, sort of early 2010s when he <laughs> he wanted to boot me up the bum for um, a few missed times. For what? Comments. For what exactly? Can't, can't, can you, get, can you list them all? Can't remember, um, to be honest. But um, yeah. at some of my lowest points when I've been performing really poorly, um, he's welcomed me into his house on a Tuesday, Wednesday night and said, right, let's have three beers each and let's just figure this out. What's going on? Um, and that's 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 really special as a as a as a mentor and as a coach to look outside of you're looking after 45 players plus the whole club to then just single one person out to to try and get a, a response from them. So you more than anyone saw the transitioning coaching philosophy from from Hardwick and, and from the over the 2016 to the start of the 2017 preseason, which is when he introduced the HHH and yep. and um, you spoke about it. Um, on grand final day when you made the grand final. How much, how much did that change, the, the change you saw in how hard we coached? Um, I think 2017 we developed this uh, intangible bond that gave us strength on the field, which you couldn't, you couldn't actually quantify it. It wasn't, oh, that's a pressure rating of over two is great. Yeah, 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 but yeah. there was this there was this special bond that we developed um, through the twenty the two thousand and seventeen preseason that um, has lasted for 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 a long time because um, there's so many guys in that era that went on to play nineteen and twenty as well that um, there's a, there is a really special bond there and he was the provider of that that bond with um, I suppose that is probably the the infamous. Um, education piece we used was the, the Triple H, the hero, hardship and highlight. And we found what our secret key was to, to unlocking success. Whatever it is that it worked. Yeah, it? and it doesn't work, it didn't it doesn't work for everyone. Um, and that's the search for any sporting team, I suppose, mm -hmm. is what's the intangible that you can bring as a group that will connect you? Because fundamentally when you go and pluck people from different backgrounds, different upbringings, from um, like different different races and from different countries and all around Australia as well, that you have to find something that connects them. And still even over a range now, like I'm 34 and we've got kids that are 18, how do you, how do you connect them? It's, it's a really difficult thing to do and, and we were able to do that. So if you were to distill it, yours is going to be a Hall of Fame career and it's been guided by this coach for the most part. How significant a figure in your life has Damien Hardwick been? Oh, he's been the most important figure in, in my football career. Um, and I think, I'm probably speaking on behalf of, of Trent and Dustin that have, have been there as well, and, and, and Dylan, the, the, the four players that have been there from the start, he would certainly be the most important figure in, in all of our careers. The impact that he's had um, from a tactical point of view and just from a teaching point of view, but then from a, a caring point of view as well uh, and a nurturing point of view. Um, and life lessons as well so he, he's he's it's not always been we haven't been molly coddled and oh, we, we're told we're great and you're really good players you just need to fix this there's been some some hard truths and there's been um we've got the cane out of those a few times and, and sort of just whipped us a little bit and said hey what's going on here so there's certainly that aspect of it as well and um yeah it's a it's a huge impact um and we, we wouldn't be the players we we are today without him and richmond wouldn't be the club it is today without him one last one before we get. Is there a sense? What, what's greater today, the sense of pride or the sense of sadness? The sense of pride, certainly. And that's um, last night. There, so there was a, a, probably a select group of players that knew early yesterday morning that this was happening. Um, and then you start to, the, you feel a whole range of emotions, and everyone feels different emotions as well. Um, but the, the, the thing that's come out of it is actually celebrating what a great Richmond man mm -hmm. Dimmer is um, and how he's been able to create great Richmond men under him as well. I mean, that's the, the sole purpose of a coach is to make your players better. Now, success can come if you, you've got to have a whole host of things line up. Sometimes it falls your way, sometimes it doesn't. But fundamentally, you just want to make your people better and, and he's certainly done that. Are you at all... Do you have any sense of lament that he won't coach you on Sunday when you'll know that it would have been for the last time? Um, oh, look, I think that would be nice. And, and, and the fans 
probably want that opportunity to thank him. There will be a moment down the journey that we get to say thank you publicly in front of the, the Tiger Army to, to Dimmer. Um, but there, there's an exciting new chapter that starts now. And this is a really interesting period for the football club. There's guys like myself that are, that are coming to the end. Um, the person that's led us through the successful period has now left. And, and this really breeds excitement for, for the next generation. Um, and that all starts tomorrow when we walk in and, and we're led by Andrew McWalter. <coughs> We'll keep our conversation going and bring Jeremy Howe in as well, who's I'll experienced a fair bit in footy. It is quite the day. It is, uh, it's a legendary day, really, in the history of the Richmond Football Club. We knew it would be from the time we sat here last night. Damien Hardwick, what a day, what a leader he's been. What a shock this has proven to be.